already know. I I'm coming unprepared. I'm coming up prepared. <laughs> hey y'all, how y'all doing? I'm in my bathroom. I look kind of skinny here, y'all, but I'm not. Um, um, how y'all doing? It's time for another chit chat. I'm all discombobulated. I don't know if that's a word, but we just said it. And I'm going to be detangling all this hair. Now, y'all, I've been experiencing a itchy scalp. It is re. Ridiculous. I have a video coming about that and how I was able to remedy that short term. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead and wash your hair, girl. But hear me out. I am going to be blowing out my hair. And you guys, when I blow out my hair, it, it the whole process of all of it takes a couple of hours, right? And so I just don't have time. Right now, I just don't have time. And typically, I'm looking at it right now. I like to delete. This is apple cider vinegar in here, which is why it's a light amber color. So I would typically use apple cider vinegar along with water. And I would do apple cider vinegar rinse. And then I would go ahead and wash my damn hair. You know what I mean? So, but I'm been a bit busy. But so I said... I have a video on how I was able to remedy it. But girl, get to the point. This is a chit chat video, y'all. Y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. Let's go ahead and take this hair down. Now, I do like to go ahead. Lord have mercy. I do like to go ahead and detangle my hair the day before washing. Um, so today is Wednesday. I'm going to detangle properly today. And then I'm going to wash tomorrow and blow out tomorrow. I need to get some more hair clips. I always say that. One, two, three, four. I just got five. Y'all, hold on. I got to go find some more hair clips. Hold on, girl. I feel like, Vivian, you've been saying it for the past three years. I know. All right, you guys. Let's talk about it. <laughs> let's bring you in some, baby. Let's go ahead and section my hair off. I possibly should have got a mirror right here. I know my husband is tired of me coming in there. He's in the master bedroom on the phone. I keep going in there. As I should. It's my damn house, too. Okay, anyway, y'all. What's going on in my personal life? Baby, it's Thanksgiving. I am so excited, y'all. This is my... I'm going to try really hard not to get emotional. This is our first Thanksgiving here in Texas as a family. And so the holidays are really big for people in the South. I think it's big for anybody. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's big in general. Um, but especially Texans, since we tend to be, or Southerners in general, tend, we tend to be a little bit more family oriented. And so, um, yeah, it's all about getting together with your family. And we used to have a lot of traditions, especially in my family growing up. Now that everybody is a little bit older, people don't do that as much. And, you know, mostly everyone does their own thing, but we still come together as, you know, like my, my parents and my sister and I, we try to come together. But it used to be like everybody would get together. Big mama cooking everything and your aunts and, 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 and uncles and, and, and those cousins you don't like. We all get together. You know, they come from out of state. And so that's just what you do. Um... It still happens to a certain degree, but not as much. At least my husband has invited his family over um, to our house for Thanksgiving. And so, <clears throat> you know, him and I were going over the menus to make sure everything's okay. And then he told me um, last week that now one of his brothers is bringing his entire family. So we're expecting about... 10 people or so um i won't have them on cam you guys because they're they're a bit conservative and honestly not everybody um wants to be on camera they don't want to be you know why especially you know where they're here to enjoy family time now my family doesn't care as much so i will be showing my family in longview um because they don't care as much so yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I'm cooking a lot of food for things, a, a variety of food. Um, I was going over the menu with my my best friend, and she's like, um, why don't you make some rice too, and rice in, in, in general? I said, that's a good idea. Because again, you know, girl, we, we're African. So I'm already making beef. I'm making uh, beef tips, tips um, traditionally their way. And so it will make sense to have that with rice. So yeah. And that's what's going on. And so, yeah, really excited about that. Um, 
Y'all, just a little testimony. My promotion finally came through. Those of you who don't know, I have been aiming for a promotion off and on <clears throat> for a good two to three years. And then my manager was telling me that the beginning of the year, she's like, you know what? I put your list in the bucket, quote unquote, to get a promotion. And like a lot of companies, promotions are few in between. You have to basically, you are competing with everyone else. And with my department, I'm, I was or I am competing with another 120 people, right? And so I busted my butt, you know, these past few years. And especially this year, quarter after quarter, I'm seeing the promotions come up, you guys. And I'm just like looking at, I'm, you know, excited for the other people. And then I'm like, what the heck? What? Whose lap do I got to sit on at this point? It was just, you know, and some people I trained meaning I help them to get, you're not necessarily help them to get in, but they spent a great deal of time with me. Um, <clears throat> and to see that happen again, I'm excited for them. And But then I'm like, why can I, what am I doing? So the big drama with me working on my birthday, that was ridiculous. And I was done and I was actually looking to get a different job, a different place of employment, either within the company or outside. My manager was aware of it. <coughs> I um, There's a process you go to try to, you know, get another job internally. And she's like, let me know. I, I support you. I said, well, I'm just looking. I'll let you know. For me personally, when I if I find that something can be so challenging and there's a, there's a little bit too much push, I step away and I kind of do a self-reflection and be like, okay, perhaps it's not time for me to look for another position. Perhaps I need to stay my ass down and work on honing in my skills and see what I can do. So I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. An opportunity came up a couple of months ago where they were looking for volunteers um, for, for a particular project and I chimed in and said I would do it. At first, I was nervous because I had to not only learn <clears throat> new software, which is basically creating um, um, creating a course, you creating an online course. I had to learn that, like this. And so I did it. I learned it in two weeks. And um, based off of that, I got a lot of good feedback. And I'm still getting great feedback. And so my manager came to me and she's like, you know, your, your name was already in the hat, you know, quote unquote, but now due to this, you're, you know, you're getting promoted. So that's it. That's why I wanted to talk about real quick. So that's personal life. I've talked a lot about that, you guys. That's personal life, child. The weather is cooler here in Texas. It's sweater weather. It's get fat and be happy weather. <laughs> I have gained 10 pounds since we've been here in Texas. But I'm fluctuating now where I'm losing the weight. I'm losing like, it's like two pounds off, one pound on two, but you know what I mean? It depends on whether or not I get a Chick-fil-A sandwich, uh, that how that weight will go. So right now I am feeling good, but I definitely need to be mindful of um, eating out a lot. And so I am trying to be careful with that. So are you guys, what I'm watching on YouTube, girl, nothing. Still watching Divorce Court. Um, child, you know, Divorce Court, Really, I think some of those people are paid paid actors and stuff because there is no reason why folks should be in relationships with that much of foolery. But or perhaps they really are in those type of relationships because I'm pretty sure you and I, we know people, we know both men and women who stick and stay in these toxic ass relationships because they love them. And I've been together with him, your honor, since I was in, in uh, since I was a teenager. So. So, so what? I mean, that just kills me. Um, so I'm watching those. Every now and then, I do like to watch episodes of Marriage, what is it called? Marriage Huntsville. The one with Martel, Marcel, Kimmy. Um, and you guys, unfortunately, the last episode, I guess, um, Kimmy had went to go get a mammogram and it turns out that she has breast cancer. And that is so sad because she's actually one of my favorite cast members on the show. So, um, her husband did post, I believe on Instagram, I need to catch up and, and look at, because I don't follow them on social media, but I, I need, I want to start doing that. Um, 
her husband is basically like, you know, she's doing good. She's going through treatment and um, she's well. She thinks you guys for all your well. But, you know, something like that. This, this is not exactly what she said, but I'm just summarizing basically. All I know is um, just from speaking to people that cancer treatment, chemo can be so draining and it can make you so tired. I mean, there's nothing you want to do, um, especially now with the weather getting cooler. Um, you're cold a lot. It's just a horrible thing to have to go through. So I, I prayers and I, I'm, you know, my prayers are surrounding her and her family. It's just really hard to have to go through that. So I feel really bad for her. But I will say this is breast cancer is caught, you know, um, pretty soon. It is very treatable. So you guys, if you are over a certain age, please make sure that you are getting mammograms. And if you have uh, cancer runs in your family, get it done early. Speak to your doctor, don't speak to Vivian, but get it done early. Um, cancer runs uh, ridiculously crazy in my family, both breast cancer and ovarian cancer and prostate cancer, which are all hormonal cancers. And so I've been getting the mammograms since I was 32. I actually have a, um, I have one schedule, uh, a mammogram schedule for next month, actually two more weeks. And so I stay on that, that and pap smears, I stay on it because a lot of the stuff can be preventative. A lot of the stuff can be detected early on, can be treated better, excuse me, if it's detected early on. So <clears throat> anyway, you guys, let's talk about something that's not so down and draining. Um... What I've been watching on TV and you guys, I want to go see the new movie Wakanda Forever. We're gonna save that for last because I'm all up in my meat and my feelings about that. Um, girl, I've watched a new show <clears throat> series. Now I don't know if it's a limited series or what, but it's called Apple Tree Yard. I think it's on Hulu. When I tell you this show was so good, and it starts it's English, okay. Everything, everyone is in Britain or something. So, <clears throat> one of the act, the actress, the main character, she played in Hannibal, either Hannibal Rising or Hannibal, and she was the blind. Remember the blind lady who Hannibal actually was starting to date. Um, so she's the main character. It deals with S A, so trigger, um, and it has to deal with <clears throat> murder. And a woman having an affair with a married man. When I tell you there's so many twists and turns to this, it's really good. Um, continuing to watch The Accident, another British show. Watching The Accident, I'm on season two and so forth. So good. It can be a little confusing. It's one of those shows to where you got to sit there and you got to really pay attention. Or you'll be lost. Kind of like freaking Cruel Summer, which I stopped. Yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch Cruel Summer because I can't. They go in between 1992, 93, 95. I can't do it. I'm going to have to rewatch it. It, it. It's good. It's a great plot. But I'm going to have to stop and watch it and really focus on it. So, yeah, the accident is good. Um, girl, Handmaid's Tale. When I tell you that season finale had me, like, the, after the last three episodes had me feeling a certain type of way for June. Now, yeah, June is getting on my nerves. And spoiler alert, I will be giving away spoilers, so just in case. So don't be being like, dang, girl, you just told everything. I'm telling you, spoiler, okay? So, <clears throat> June gets on my damn nerves. I do feel like, a lot of people say there's no way you can love two people at the same time. There is, there is, you can actually love two people. You can be in love. I think you can be in love with two people at the same time um, because the love can be different, if that makes sense. So June is all wishy-washy. One thing I, I kind of don't like that she does, though, and I see her doing is I feel like a part of her is using Luke, who is her husband. Luke is her husband, right? So they are in Canada, and girl, these can Canadians are not playing around. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought Canadians were supposed to be nice. I mean, <laughs> y'all supposed to be have good attitude and, and be pleasant. Canada does not want Americans there. So <clears throat> they're having protests. They are being very aggressive that they don't want these Americans there. So it's gotten to the point to where Americans are leaving Canada and seeking um, asylum or whatever you call it somewhere else in another country right so 
they have gone to Nick. Uh, what is his name? I don't know his name. We're going to call him uh, Serena's Bay. Serena's Bay has <laughs> Serena's Bay has gone to Nick several times. Basically, like, if you want, you can come over to over here. We, we can protect you. You can bring your wife. You can be close to June. So you could have your inside wife and your outside side hoe. Okay, that's not what I said. Your side piece, aka June. And this is the thing that is absolutely crazy to me. Everybody seems to know that, except for Luke, I don't think Luke knows as much. Or if he does know, he's playing dumb as hell. But it seems to be that everyone seems to know that Nick and June really do have a thing for each other. Even Nick's wife is like, you're still in love with her? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Girl, yes. <laughs> so stress down. So... The the funny ass com the funny ass commander the one with the goatee he's all white with the white goatee and the white hair I think he's slick as hell I think he has some things going on and so there is a threat to have June killed <clears throat> and there comes an incident to where June is almost ran over by a Canadian protester right and she ends up in the in the hospital. Nick decides to come from Gilead to visit her, but she doesn't know that Nick visits her. She's in a coma, okay? And so he's seeing her. On the way back to Gilead, again, Serena's bay is like, look here, Nick. You came to see her. And he's like, don't tell her I was here. He's like, okay, I want to tell her. He's like, you, you, this is Nick. Just make sure that you treat, you know, you watch out for her because they're trying to kill her. He's like, yeah, I'm going to watch out for her. Like, I'm watching out for Serena's ass. This is what Serena's bay is saying, right? And so Nick is basically like, I gotta go. And so Serena Bay is like, Nick, why don't you come back here? She, you know, he and Nick is like, she doesn't meet me. She doesn't meet need me. She has a husband. She got her baby. Um, I'm no one. And Serena Bay is like, Nick, <laughs> you're someone to her. And you absolutely right, Serena Bay. Nick is someone to her. So um, June, I think in the previous episode, June finds out that Nick declined going to Canada. And, you know, she basically was like, so why did you not want to come over here and tap this over here in Canada? And so, yeah, I'm silly. And Nick was like, you have your own family. I have my own family. Um, and, you know, we just, and so... June is talking and then all of a sudden Nick says she's pregnant. And June June stops talking and that changes the, the dynamics a little bit, right? She's probably thinking, wow, okay, you're just going to get all of us knocked up then. Okay, so I don't get Nick's angle. He does confess to June, of course, and we can feel it that he, he loves her. Hell, his wife knows that he loves her. So let me go. I know I'm going back and forth. So, you know, cut and chase. Nick goes to, I don't know who's having a party, but he goes and he punches the um, guy with the white, that gray, the gray, the gray, what do you call them, y'all? He punches the old dude with the gray hair, the goatee, the goatee, the one that's always being petty and shit. He's like, you could have had her killed. I don't know necessarily say, I don't know if he necessarily said it wasn't him, but I think there is the notion of, if Canada wants to kill her, that ain't our problem. You know what I mean? Like, if she gets killed, it's <laughs> she's done a lot. And so, yeah, no. Child, so that happens. And so, it's gotten to the point to where, oh, when, some, when June was attacked right, Luke came out and whooped that man's butt. And unfortunately, he died. He succumbed to his injuries and he died. So, Serena's bae was like, um... Luke, your ass is probably going to go to prison. We got to go. So, we we got to go. We ain't got time. We, we got to go get the baby. You know, we, we got to leave. We got to get out the country because Serena Bay says that, you know, we got, we can get you out the country. There's a lot of, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of Americans that are fleeing to other countries. So she does it. They get on the train. They get on this train. Then all of a sudden, Luke decides to sacrifice himself. And June is crying and stuff. He's like, well, Luke, I'm like, girl, June. 
You stop it. See, that's why I don't get it. Like, she's fighting for this stuff, but then you going around to Nick and asking Nick why he didn't come over to um, Canada, but then you getting upset that your husband is turning himself in. That's a great opportunity to get your side piece. So <laughs> I just don't understand why she's all over the place. I really do feel like June is. While she's on the train, right? I'm not going to talk much about Serena because there's a lot of plot holes that are missing in the show, I feel like. While she's on the train, um, she hears a baby crying. She looks down. And that's Serena's ass holding her baby. And so June walks down with her baby. And Serena like gives her a smile like, do you have a diaper? And I don't want to look at her like, hell for hell, no, I ain't got no diapers. <laughs> but it just cuts to them smiling, you know, just June. I mean, Serena giving this weird ass awkward smile. And it just cuts to her. Because those of you who don't know, Serena has been put in a place to where she's almost like a handmaid's. And it's very ironic, but a part of me still feels sorry for her. And I really do. Girl, okay, cut into reasonable doubt. Baby, this show was so unexpected and good. Now, this is the one where the lawyer is defending. Well, she was defending Michael Ely. Then she got a case of a billionaire who supposedly had, again, essayed, um, a worker who he was also having an affair with dead. And then this woman unfortunately ends up dead. So then it turns into a murder case. First of all, the last episode, Michael Ely is going through, I don't know, Nate Damon. Isn't it Nate Damon? Damien? Damien. Damien is going through Jack's cell phone. Jax is the name of the lawyer. And so her old fling, who used to be the security officer, is like, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you. Damon's looking at the phone like, this helpful. And he deletes. Those text messages from the other boy. So, like I said, you know, he's breaking her off some because he's been in jail for like damn near 16 years, child. And so he's like, you know, <laughs> he's he's, you know, doing what he wants. And so I just don't understand why Jack Jax Jackson. What is her name? Jacqueline. Her name is Jacqueline. That's her real name, but they call her Jax. I really don't understand why she did not see or why she couldn't tell that this man had a thing for her that is not just sex like he really did have a thing for her this character to me you guys again she's a lawyer um she's a good lawyer too and she's going through a separation with her finest husband lewis um she is the epitome in my opinion of someone who is who is very selfish there's a lot of things that she does i could tell she cares about her family but there are some things that she that she do as a whole that is very selfish um, and is very self-seeking. So I'm, I know I'm all over the place. So Michael Ely, a.k.a. Damien, had removed and deleted those oh, text messages. And child, I guess her husband, Louis, saw them out to eat somewhere. They were having dinner, meaning Jackson, Damien. And baby, within 24 hours... He was screwing somebody that she knew. And I mean, well, let me, let me just say this. I shouldn't say that. He was he was being intimate. He was laying a pipe for someone else. <laughs> when I tell you he did that move to where he lifted that girl up and was holding her in front of him. You know what I'm talking about? Holding her in front of him. I'm like, oh, Louis, you you work out. Louis, Louis is fit. He's working out. Louis is his character. He's such, he's, I, I, he's the type of man that wear, wears his, um, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's very loving. He still cares for Jax so much. He just wants her to make him a priority over, and not necessarily him, but to make the family a priority over work. It is not necessarily to say that that could be the case all the time, but it seems like that. It seems like Jax has a habit of forever putting her job above her family. Um, and so that's going on. But yeah, girl, he, he was messing around. I don't even know if this person is really Jax's friend. I couldn't remember or if this is someone that she definitely knows, right? So that's going on. Child, I'm sorry, but the billionaire, I have to, I have to figure out the billionaire's name on the show because I keep forgetting 
When I tell you he is the epitome of a narcissistic, narcissistic bum. So for a while, I'm not going to tell y'all all of it. But for a while there, I was thinking that. Um, okay, so the wealthy businessman name is Brandon. And the employee employee that he's accused of murdering is Kalisha, right? So I thought for a while that Brandon's wife, well, I think that's his name. Brandon's wife was the one that actually killed her because she showed up to Kalisha's house and um went down on on her husband <laughs> she's she, you know these people are so damn petty then for a minute i'm like okay if it's not brayden's wife then maybe it is the english um business partner because he doesn't like kalisha either right he doesn't like her either so i'm like oh maybe he did it with his little ass you never know who it is so Michael Ely is showing signs of I don't know what it is you guys but he is breaking down and when I tell you like I said the last episode I was very shocked at how things turned out I hope there's going to be a season two again this is called reasonable doubt it is primarily a black cast it has a lot of fine people the number one name dropping person is Michael Ely he's in it and Michael Ely just went crazy I'm not going to give all the details, but he just, I'm like, come on, light skin. You know, I normally don't go for y'all, but you fine. You older. <laughs> He's over 45, I think, and you just snapped. So, uh, it's good. You guys try to check it out. So, y'all, JB and I went to the movies this past weekend. We went to go see Wakanda Forever. Now, um, what the hell is happening here? Hold on, y'all. A whole rat nest. I'm not going to give a lot, but I will just, you know, express my, my feelings. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I will say that no spoilers for Wakanda forever. Um, girl, first of all, let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't eat, uh, I do not eat. <laughs> Y'all going to say, damn, you are so ghetto. I am. I really don't eat movie food. I pack my own snacks. I will pack a whole meal, which is what I did. I have no shame. So I had us uh, drinks. I got uh nuts candy gummy bears um and then i went to wendy's and i got a chicken sandwich <laughs> girl <laughs> I, had whole, I had a whole chicken sandwich um two sets of fries some lemonade <laughs> i went in there and look one of the lady a lady was in was behind me and she started laughing she said that's what i should have did i said girl i said this is a small Hick ass movie theater. Ain't nobody gonna come in here. The movie theater is so small, you guys. It's one of those, it's the original old school setup. You can't even recline in the chairs. It just rocks back and forth. Well, I was literally sitting up like this. You go in, you know how typically in the movie theater, they get you your ticket and all that outside and then you go in, uh-uh. You gotta get your butt all the way in. You order your popcorn, your drink, and you get your tickets from the same person. <laughs> That's how small, y'all, that's how small it is. So anyway, um, so while we're there, and it's, it filled up very quickly. It started to fill up, but we, side, side, now we would never go to that movie theater again. I'm not even into going to movies in general because of this right here, right now, especially during COVID. Why this man, older man, came to sit, sit next to me. He was about two, two chairs down. Why was he coughing? And was coughing a lot, like, <coughs> I said, oh, no. <laughs> I, I said, Jamie, I want you to move all the way. We put about eight chairs between us. I said, no. And if I was the girl in front of because he's coughing around on her neck. I'm like, if I was her, I would have moved. Honestly, I would have moved to a whole nother theater. It's just, that's just too much to And why are you going to the, to the movies if you sick, if you cough, even if you're not sick? We're in the middle, of, we're still in a pandemic and you coughing. Baby, I got all the way up. I could, for a minute there, I put my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're not about to get me sick up here. And I'm trying to watch Wakanda Forever. Get out of here with that. So, y'all, get to the point. So, Wakanda, Wakanda Forever, of course, they started off with a tribute to Chadwick Bosman. It was beautiful. It was it was well done. And in the actual series, if I believe, he dies anyway in the series. Um, I don't read any comics, but he dies anyway. And so, they do a tribute to it to him and oh my god it is just it was it was a cheer, a tearjerker this was an interesting um uh part two i absolutely love the fight scenes i love that 
oh my God, that beautiful actress, she's English. She has the defined facial features and she played in, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget. She played on another show I was watching where she was also SA too and she woke up and couldn't remember. Oh my God, what I can't remember. When I tell you this, that woman is absolutely stunning to me. I mean, her nose, her eyes, her lips, her cheekbones. She is the epitome of royal beauty, in my opinion. And of course, you have Lupita. And so um, this deals with there is a underworld kingdom. And I'm not giving, this is not a spoiler because this is part of the trailer. Um, and there's a, a, a water god and they have... Mexican background. Let me let me back up. It's indigenous Mexican. And so Lupita, of course, is speaking Spanish, and her Spanish is flawless because Lupita is actually Kenyan Mexican. She was born in Mexico. When she first um came on the scene and what was it, 12 years a slave. I remember I was just trying to find some information on her. And there were a lot of interviews, not a lot, but there were several interviews with her um speaking Spanish fluently, not like someone I went to school. I took, you know, Spanish one and Spanish two. No, this is someone who legit speaks, you know, she she speaks it like she's from there. Because she is. Um, and those of you who don't know, and it, it was something that I found out years ago that it's interesting what what we can do with what we can do to each other as humans, but there is actually some, I don't want to say animosity, but there's for a minute there. Certain people in Mexico were looking down upon indigenous people that are there. Absolutely crazy. It was great. It had some good action scenes. I loved the overall story. I was booing. Look, I was booing and crying towards the end. They did another little tribute. I got up. I'm like, Jamie, it's time to go. I didn't want to wait because I know there was other things to come at the end of the movie. But I was already, my makeup was, you know, I was like, I can't do this. I'm going to have to go. Um, it was beautiful, beautiful, absolutely stunning. Well done. Is it as good as the first one? No, because the hype for the first one, it was so overwhelming. You know what I mean? You could feel it. And it is not like that now, especially with him being gone. And it's just, I feel I feel a certain way because I, I so wish he could have been around for the second one. Um, with that being said, I really do hope that they make a... Uh, a movie with the um indigenous god, the Mayan god. I can't remember his name, you guys, in the in the series. I hope they make one just for him, because first of all, he's fine, and that's about it. But <laughs> y'all, okay, y'all, I'm all over the place. Um, I'm almost done. Let's do this last section of detangling my hair, and then we're going to pin my hair up and. We're going to be good. Okay. Okay. So what are y'all watching? Oh, we can use this last few minutes to talk. Y'all tell me what you watching. What you watching on TV? Are you going to go see Wakanda forever? You're like, hell no, girl. We're not trying to go to no sickly ass movie theater. Yeah, don't do it. Now, I will say this. If you stream it, they don't, I don't want to say they don't make as much money, but they do lose some money as opposed to going to the movie theater. Um, so what are y'all watching on TV? There was something, one series that one of you guys had recommended. Oh, okay. So the Game of Thrones, what is it? There's one about the dragons season. I'm not, I'm not interested. Um, because one, again, I didn't even finish Game of Thrones. Girl, I didn't even finish The Wire. That's how... <laughs> I started watching The Wire a couple of years ago. I'm like, I'm only like three episodes away because I felt like I got all the good episodes I wanted to get to. So I'm like, I'm done. You know, y'all killed off some some of my people. Idris, Idris is dead. What am I going to do? So yeah, y'all let me know. I'm going to go ahead. Now, one of the things I like to do, you guys, so, so this is like this, right? It's all over the place. So I make sure that my ends are... Definitely, look at that long twist there. And so now, okay, now what I do, two things. I'm gonna take some hair oil, go to my scalp, and then we're going to put this hair up, okay? 
All right, hold on, y'all. Now, my signature updos, literally, I could do updos with twists. I would literally do this, put this over like this, see that, and then I'll take this, bring this over like that. Isn't that cute? I would do something like that, and I could wear that for like a whole week. But we ain't gonna do that because my hair is about two weeks old, so I'm gonna take some hair ties and just bring this back. And I don't wanna be too tight, because you guys, the reason why I have kept my edges, you see how full my edges are? And honestly, they used to be a lot more fuller than this. The reason why I've kept my edges is that I'm very careful about not snatching my hair or putting too much tension on my hair. So that's loose and that's back. I'm looking like Norman Bates' mom, but that's okay. All right, you guys, that is it. Thank you so much.